All right, just a quick little uh, blip here. Uh, we're down at the lower, we're on the bump stops, so we're at the lower travel right now. I put a line there. Uh, this is basically where the upper travel limit was. There might even been a little more room than that, but uh, that's basically where it stopped. And I put a mark here when I had it set at ride height. I set it at ride height, drew a line just like that above that uh, rubber uh, seal right there. And so if you look at that, we are just almost perfectly in the middle of shock travel. Uh, yeah, I couldn't really get any closer than that if I uh, spent all my time concentrating on that. So uh, I'm real tickled with that. Now one other thing I want to do is uh, I haven't really uh, played a whole lot with the camber, okay? Um, so I'm going to check that. It seems I checked it once before and it was just slightly positive, which is fine because I want to be able to shim it back. But what, uh, what I got to thinking about was our clearance here on the arm. If I have to push that arm in more because there's too, way too much positive camber, uh, that might cut down some of that clearance. So that's definitely something to uh, factor in. So I'm going to take a couple measurements here and we'll uh, see what we come up with. Well, let's see here. Um, I've got a digital level here, digital protractor. Uh, and uh, the cool thing with this is, is it, uh, it has an alt zero, an alternative zero. Okay, so uh, I'm going to turn it on here. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up against the frame because the frame should be my reference. Now that says 88.4, right around in there, 88.5. Now I'm going to hit the alt zero. Okay. And what this is going to give me is this is going to give me the difference. That's 3.5 degrees. Yeah, see, and I need to tilt the top in. Ooh, I got a lot more there than I thought. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to want to uh, put a couple more washers in there and check that clearance again. Um, If I put it on the flat here, I want to try to make sure that I'm uh, straight up and down the same amount uh, so I don't inject it a second angle. Uh, yeah, that's looking like about 3.8 degrees or so. Almost 4 degrees of positive. I definitely want to get it back uh, right around zero, just a hair negative. I want to make it, I'd rather have it a little positive out and be able to shim it back in. Um, because I can't make the arms longer, you know what I mean? Uh, if I put a solid block in there, I don't want to put a block so thick that I can't come back this way. So I will err on the side of needing a couple of shims, uh, so that way the alignment shop can pull it back in without any problem, uh, instead of having to machine the spacer down, uh, because it will not be washers uh, later. So let me grab a few more washers and get that a little closer to zero and check clearance again. Okay, we're back. Um, I'll uh, take it off the stand and show from a different angle here in just a minute, but uh, uh, we are now at uh, roughly 0.9, almost a degree of negative camber. Uh, and you really, my understanding is you really wouldn't want much more than that. You're going to start getting too much tire wear and stuff like that. Uh, so what that, what that does is that means that you're, you're going to be somewhere in a half a degree or something like that, I think. Uh, so the fact that we're in just a little bit more, now I can check clearances and stuff like that and know that we could go at least to a zero camber uh, and a half a degree in. Um, and it was really kind of a pain. I had to put longer bolts in the top. I'll show you how, much, uh, <laughs> how many washers I got up in here. It's, uh, it's a lot. And uh, I think it's going to cause some other issues as well. Uh, in fact, I think I can take the the shock out. That way, I don't have to keep fighting it. Um, so we're we're set up there, okay. And I'm back to where I only have about an eighth of an inch clearance in there. So as soon as I take this out and it starts to uh, settle, yeah, it's already already hitting. Uh, so that's not good. That means the upper arms are going to require more modification. And if I have to do much modification to the upper control arm, 
there is no point in uh, using the 720 arm. I might as well, uh, I might as well just make uh, new ones. The 720 arm would then become an option for somebody who wants to do it a bit cheaper. They could get it, modify themselves, take you know, all that kind of thing. Because uh, I really don't want to deal with the. Uh, used parts from the scrapyard, having to modify them, clean them up, all that kind of stuff, and, and send them back out there. Uh, I would rather deal with uh, brand new parts. So, um, yeah, let me take the shock out of there, and then I can... Uh, well, let's see here. We already know it won't go down any further. So, uh, you can see that's a, that's a lot of washer there. Let's, uh, Let's see about what that is. That is uh, whew, closing in on an inch and a quarter, inch and three sixteenths. Uh, that's way too much to put on the bolts, at least as far as I'm concerned. And you can see here, too, that we're running out of clearance on either side with the arm. Uh, there you go. And we're hitting the shock. So if I... Oh, for Pete's sakes. If I lift this up, we're getting getting real close here too. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm up against the stock, the stop rather, and we're still clearing there. Okay, that's good. I like that. Uh, hang on one second here. Let me uh, pull the shock bolt and see if I can get that shock out of there while it's still. Short. No. Ouch. No. That ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna have to take the uh, take the upper arm off again. Okay. Uh, so much for that interlude. Uh, I want to see how far down. I want to check my clearances and that stuff. I think everything actually will be okay, other than the shock. Man, if it's not one thing, it's another, huh? Well. This is kind of uh, disappointing. With this pulled back in so far, uh, I really wish I would have been uh, closer on my uh, camber measurements uh, earlier. And I thought I was within a degree, so I'm not exactly sure why it turned out to be that I was three degrees off. Uh, it was actually close to four. Uh, I almost had to double the washers at the top there. Now, anyway, here's the, uh, here's the new issue, is that... Um, I noticed as I was trying to, when I pulled the shock out and I was trying to bolt the ball joint, top ball joint back on, I was real close and the lower ball joint was uh, close to its limit, okay? Uh, and so what's happening here is, is I'm down on the bump stop. Uh, that's, that's okay there, but when I come this direction and go down, it stops early. See that? We're, we're not anywhere close. And that is the ball joint being uh, at its limit backwards. Uh, the solution to that basically would be to, when I do the lower control arm, do a pie cut and put that, this end of the arm at an, at an angle there. Uh, you know, I'll probably have to uh, do some more measuring, do some more testing and stuff like that. Um, this, I'll do it with this arm, but this arm, uh, since I don't want it, uh, you know, basically I'm gonna have to, uh, change the angle and uh, cut it apart, change the angle and weld it back together, uh, it will probably have to be a bit longer. Yes, it'll be longer because this arm will have to go down a little bit in order to, uh, you know, get that angle. Uh, so, that's not good news. It does clear the other direction. Um, I don't know what the comparison is in range of motion with this ball joint compared to like a uh, high misalignment uh, uh, mono ball. Uh, but that ups the cost significantly. That mono ball ends up being about the same cost as what this lower arm uh, cost new. So, not good. Oh, hey, you know, actually, it just dawned on me. For as much as I pulled this top in, Basically, I get to go start back over again, mount the hub up, put it back on here, unbolt this stuff. Uh, it's, 
Yeah, the upper arm is going to end up coming back out to where it was. And I'll have to change the angle and everything like that uh, and lengthen the lower arm. So the, the upper one will come in probably just a little bit. Lower one will have to uh, get lengthened a little bit. Um, man. What a pain in the rear. So, while we're doing this, let's, uh, let's set it right there. We'll pretty much square this way. Let's take one more peek here. Put it up against the frame. Get the uh, get the alternative zero going. Yeah, and I'm 0 0.6, 0 0.7 in. 0.4. Okay, so that's pretty darn close. Man. Well, that's uh, that's it for today. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I'm going backwards, so that's part of the uh, that's part of the process. Yeah, I know I said that was it for the day, but I got to thinking about it, and I was like, you know, do I really trust this frame rail? Because there there is a slight seems like there's a slight crown to it and that stuff. And I thought, you know, that's a, that's a pretty short uh, area to be taking a uh, uh, an accurate reading off of. So what I did was I put this horizontally on the uh, cross member under the core support, okay, and set the alt zero. It was uh, the the frame actually the way it's sitting on the floor is within just a few tenths, uh, and then I also checked the cross member under the engine, okay, and both of those are basically perfectly parallel with each other, uh, according to this. So now it won't give me off zero, but it'll give me off ninety, okay, and. It's reading 88.1. Uh, yeah, 88, 88 to 88.2. Uh, got a slight bit of wobble in here. But anyway, I don't know if you can see that, but as I pull this back, I just went past 90 there. That's pretty dang close to 90. That's 89.9. Uh, uh, it's, it's looking like about half of those washers are going to come back out of there. So... Um, I'm much more comfortable taking the measurement off of the cross members and comparing that because that's what the truck's going to be. That's the level of the truck anyway. So uh, the frame wasn't uh, frame wasn't very accurate. So uh, tomorrow I will take those measurements and I'll reset the the washers and stuff like that on here. Uh, and what that means is that uh, the, I think the lower ball joint then will be with back within its limits uh, and will be okay there. Um, and I don't know if I started to say it or not uh, before, but basically what will happen up here, because these bolts are so long, instead of using spacers uh, and one washer, it will probably be like a, a one-inch thick plate that will also uh, anchor with a bolt through this hole. Uh, in order to get some more clearance here, uh, what I might do is I may have the block bolt to these two holes, and then I'll have the control arm go down just a little bit uh, and bolt into new holes. Uh, i got to kind of play with that because what, uh, what happens then is as, as the arm drops down, okay, uh, it comes in as well because the shock tower is at an angle. Okay, uh, so that effectively makes the arm shorter and pulls it in, which instead of doing that, the block will end up being thinner. Um, so, a lot, of, uh, a lot of finagling there to figure that out, but that would give me a lot more room here. The other thing it does too then, you know, we're at ride height, okay, and the point from here to here actually goes down. Okay, so if I can move this point down and make it pivot down here basically and get it level or at a slight up what that means is then every time you hit a bump or go into a corner hard 
you're going to get your uh, negative camber uh, for better cornering and that stuff as opposed to right now technically effectively this would get just a tiny bit longer as it comes up um, so the the caster the camber would actually go slightly more positive uh, with this setup so there would be an advantage to to moving that down uh, in moving that down that also affects my bump stop height and stuff like that as well so ah oh, man I guess maybe if I were a professional engineer or whatever I could figure this all out uh, without all the trial and error but uh, trial and error it is